Hi, this is Karen, and I am here to walk you through how to set up a scorecard from scratch. So it is helpful if you create a bill sheet first. So I've already got this bill sheet I made uh, called Telemedicine. Uh, and what I did is I just said COVID and then any of Telemedicine or Telehealth. Perfectly straightforward query. And then I said, leave out the resolutions and the memorials. Those aren't going to be useful to me in my scorecard. Um, and then because I'm just looking for bills that actually got to a vote, I said, only show them to me if they at least crossed over. And I'm not interested in the ones that failed. So I've narrowed it down. So that's going to be my scorecard. Easy peasy. So now I go to the scorecard section and I save you all. And that shows me the scorecards I've made already. And maybe you haven't made any yet, but that's fine. You'll have the new scorecard button up in the corner. So the same way that you start a bill sheet, go to view all, then that's where the new button is. That's how all of these different things work. Now, if you don't have a scorecard section up there, that means you haven't started a scorecard subscription yet. So you should either go up to the account menu and buy a scorecard subscription, or you can reach out to me and I would be happy to add a free trial to your account so you can create some scorecards and see if you think they're gonna be useful to you or to your organization. Um, so either way, go ahead and get that section set up and then we'll say new scorecard. All right, so then I pick which state I wanna do and I'm gonna go ahead and do Colorado and then you give it a name. So let's do scorecard for Colorado and create. Okay, so now that drops me onto the manage tab where I can start adding bills to the scorecard. Um, so I can come and change the name and other things anytime I want, uh, but this copy bill section is where I wanna start. So it says, okay, what is the source of your bills? So I'm gonna use that telemedicine card we looked at and say add bills. And that's gonna grab all the bills from Colorado and put them on this sheet. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and load up bills now from one of my other sheets and say add bills. And then that would get bills from there and add them here. So loading up the bills really is just copying them onto the scorecard. You are not creating an association between the bill sheet and the scorecard. So if the bill sheet changes, the scorecard isn't gonna know about it. So if new bills come in because of the keywords or if you add new bills to your scorecard or if you change the scores in your scorecard, I'm sorry, in your bill sheet, then those bills are not gonna automatically change on your scorecard. The bill sheets and the scorecards are completely independent. Now, if you do end up adding bills, you can always come back here and say telemedicine and then just add them again. It'll grab any new bills and put them on here. Um, so it's really easy to go ahead and add new bills to here. Um, it won't change any of the work you've already done. It'll just grab new bills and, and plunk them on here. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the legislation tab. So this is where the work is really gonna take place. So I can add more bills. So if there's a couple more bills I wanna add, no problem. I can come in here and I can say, uh, I'm also going to throw in a couple bills for uh, COVID and unemployment, maybe, uh, and say, what bills are those? And that'll let me, I can see this bill was already added to my scorecard, but I'm going to go ahead and put in this housing assistance and maybe this bill payment. Um, by the same token, I can add in bill numbers. So if I know the bill numbers, or if I've got them listed somewhere, I can copy and paste them right in here. But if you are doing bill numbers, remember to switch this contains all to contains any so that you're getting any one of those bill numbers, just a word to the wise. Also, if you wanna add in bills from previous sessions, that's fine. You just uncheck this box. So by default, we assume you just want this year's bills, but you can always look back in time and do this search again and then pick the older bills that you're after. Um, I imagine I won't find any in 2019 that say COVID. So um, yeah, so those are the bills that I'm gonna want. Okay, now if one of these uh, came through and it's not actually reimbursement, so that was on my bill sheet, but reimbursement isn't my interest, then I can edit this guy. Um, and then there's a delete button down at the bottom and say, you know what, just take that bill out. That one's not interesting to me. So you can load up your bills from your bill sheet and then still kind of cherry pick a little bit and, and kick out the ones you don't actually want on your scorecard. All right, so in this grid, we've given you a few helpful things. So the bill progress, and I had already said it to say, just give me things that are signed. Um, the latest time that it moved. So as the session goes on, obviously we'll be updating your scorecard with the latest information. We add new votes at noon and at midnight. So if new votes come in, we'll add them into your scores at, just as soon as they come in. Uh, how many votes each bill has had. So you can see if a bill hasn't had votes yet, it's not gonna immediately impact what your scorecard looks like when you just add your vote score because there's nothing to score yet. Uh, but you can, in fact, uh, give points for sponsorship. So even bills that never come to a vote can still come in here and impact um, how your 
how your scorecard looks. So it's okay if there's not any votes, we're just letting you know. Um, and then the vote rating, that's the work that I need to do right now. Um, and the comment I'm gonna add in here right now. All right, so I'm gonna look at this housing assistance one first and I'm gonna say edit. Oh, if I wanna read the bill, of course, I can click on the bill number, but I don't wanna do that. I just wanna edit this bill. Um, so I'm gonna come in here innocent of any knowledge of what this bill does. Uh, so I've got the name of it. So I can change this name and override the name with something more clear. That's a pretty clear name. But if the name bill has a nickname or if something, if I need to clarify it so that my members when they're looking will understand what bill this was, you can override the name uh, to be a nice, simple, understandable name if you need to. And then the bill rating, we just need you to give good bills a positive number and bad bills a negative number. So you can just go one and minus one for good and bad, or we like to recommend going like zero to five, like you're rating a movie for a good bill or zero to minus five it's, if it's a bad bill. So I don't know anything about this bill, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it four points and say pretty darn good bill. Um, and then the sponsor rating, this bill had four legislative sponsors. So I could give those four people extra credit for having put their name on the bill. But I can say, you all get an extra point because I liked this bill a lot. You can also make the sponsor rating negative. So if it's a bad bill, you could re subtract points from people for having put their name on a terrible bill. All right. And then categories is a way you can break these bills up. Um, so that's on the manage tab. I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, comment is where you can explain. Uh, this was a good bill for our peeps. And then that's our little comment to explain. So when people are looking at it, they can understand like why we gave it that rating. And then you can also put in a link. So if you've got a blog post, I'm gonna go ahead and post in uh, one of our blog posts here. Uh, and then you can say extra info. And so then you can, if you've got something that you wanna share, another website, a newspaper article, a call to action, a page where people are gonna do something, whatever, you can um, add that in. All right, and then the votes. So by default, we're gonna take the most recent vote from each chamber. So the last thing that happened in the Senate was this third rating. Got this little calculator to show you that's the vote that we're gonna use for scoring. You don't have to have it work that way, uh, but that's our default behavior because that's what most people are gonna want. Um, and then we've got some other votes the Senate took. And then the last thing that happened in the House was the third reading and it's got the little calculator. So we know that's the one that's gonna go in. Now, if I don't want that, I could say, if that particular vote was shenanigans and I don't want to count it, I could say exclude and it'll go down to the next most recent vote. Um, so you can always do that if you don't want a bill or a particular vote to be counted for whatever reason. Um, or if this is actually fine and you want to include it, um, but it was actually voting to kill the bill, then you could say minus one or minus four because I liked this bill. So you can rate a specific, you can override your main rating on a specific thing. Um, so I am going to just stick with the default behavior there. Uh, and then you could also take a specific vote like on this amendment and say, you know what, I'm gonna include this in addition. It says, you wanna give it four points? I'm gonna say, actually, no, I didn't like this amendment. I'm gonna give it minus one and say, you know, not a great amendment. So you could add in an extra comment to explain why you're giving different points to this specific amendment. Now, this was just in a committee, so just a few people voted on it. So only those people are going to have these extra points in here. Um, let me make it two, actually. All right. So you can go through here and get as far into the weeds as you want, looking at the individual votes and scoring individual votes, or you can just leave it to our to go with our default behavior if you're comfortable with just using the last vote from each chamber. Um, but if there's specific amendments you want to call out, by all means, you can add that in. Um, and it's going to depend on the state, like um, if you've got the committee votes or the amendments or like what they put up for us to grab and, and share with you. Um, all right. So then I see my comment. This is a good bill for our peeps. And then I've got my link that would take me off uh, so people can click and go read more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this behavioral health one. Maybe that one wasn't great. So I'm going to say minus two on that. Stick with the default behavior. And then um, utility bill, related assistance. Um, I'm gonna say that one was okay. And then my comment's gonna be just okay. Great. And then I'll just stick with the default behavior here too. All right, so now I've gone through all my bills and given them a rating. So that is obviously the meat of the effort here is to decide what you think of a bill and then explain it in some sensible way. And now when I go to the summary tab, I'm going to see the results. So everybody, how they how they voted, um, and who did uh, who voted well and who voted poorly. All right. So I've got all these different 
squares in here, who was helpful and who was not. And these possible points are how many points they could have got if they voted exactly correctly. And so we see that Rod has nine, whereas everyone else has seven. So uh, he was on that committee where we gave the extra points to. Um, and then we see his vote index, that's the percentage of the time you voted correctly. So if you voted correctly all of the time, then that would be 100%. If you voted half right and half wrong, then that is around 50%. And then if you voted entirely wrong, then that would be 0%. Um, all right, so that is just the percentage of the time you voted correctly um, out of 100%. And then the total score is the sum of all of the votes that you did get a chance to vote on, plus any of the sponsorship points that you earned. So you might have someone who was 100% but didn't have as many chances to vote. Um, so we consider this to be like, I like to think of that vote index as the ideological purity, like just what percentage of the time did they get it right? And the total score is more the impact. So how many chances did they have? Are they on the committee you care about or in the chamber that did the most action? Did they sponsor a lot of bills? Add that all together, that's their total impact on your agenda. Um, all right, so that is kind of the scoring. You can set this up to sort in any order you want. So you can click on any of these to check it out, but you can also on the manage tab, set the default sort. So when people first come, what is it? What is the point you're trying to make? Do you want them just to look up their own person? Do you want them to see who was the most pure or who had the most impact? So pick what makes sense to you. And then when people come, they'll form the initial impression you want them to but then they can get in here and start interacting with it and figure out and maybe click on their own representative. So if I click on um, Brianna here, uh, I'll be able to see uh, how she voted. So I've got uh, her individual votes. And so I see like, yes, this is a good bill. And then the Ali, this one I didn't like, she voted yes. So it's red to say not good. And then my other comment. Um, but if I, let me go ahead and close her and let's go back and find Rod. Uh, so he got a chance to vote on that amendment, right? So now on the amendment, I've got House Appropriations Amendment, and now I've got that extra comment, not a great amendment. So that was where I went in and put a comment on the specific vote. That overrides the overall comment for the vote to explain why that specific vote had something different. So this is the comment I put on the bill, so the, the votes I've got on the bill are just going to have the bill comment. But if I want to, I can override that with the comment about the very specific bill. Um, and then again, the color coding lets you see if that was right or wrong. And then you can see if they sponsored any of the bills you care about. Um, so these are pretty helpful as far as the individual legislator looks go. So you can remind yourself before you talk to this person or see like exactly where they were good and bad. Um, or people can look up their own representative. Um, all right, so that is what the summary does. Then the bill score is just a whole grid. So if you have your own way you wanna present this or you wanna stuff it into another format, great. You can just export this whole grid of how they, what the bill, you know, all of the bills and what all the scores were. Um, just say export and that'll put it right out to Excel for you. Um, we've got other visualizations. So by party who is voting the right way and the wrong way. So you can pull out certain people. Uh, each one of these is a, it's a legislator. Um, and then maps. So you could also see the geographic distribution of the people that you thought were voting right and wrong. And then you can go back to manage and fine tune any of these things. So again, I'm happy to help you get this all just right uh, or whatever else you need. Um, if you're happy with it and you wanna share it, you can go to the very bottom and say, make this scorecard public. Um, and then that will give you the link that you can share um, in a blog post on Twitter, whatever, or it'll give you the code that you can embed this right on your website if you want to share the bill sheet with everybody. Um, and then if you, let me go ahead and save that. Um, so then if you do set that up, then that, once it's public, then you can use that public version and share the individual legislator pages. So if you're just wanting to share one person's page, you can't use the one that says account you have to use this one that says public. So when you go to share the link, make sure it says public so that the public can see it because the one in your account is private just to you. Um, and then you could always turn it off by unchecking this and then that will remove it from the public's point of view. All right, 
So that is the scorecard. I hope that was helpful. I hope you have fun with it. Um, and of course, reach out if you have any questions. All right. Thanks, everybody.